Hello, Ms. Brown here. I'm going to walk you through the Paramecium Homeostasis Gizmos Lab. In order to do this lab, you're going to have to do two things. You want to A, find the actual Gizmos Lab. You go to Clever, you click Gizmos, you find this little weird looking organism right here known as a Paramecium, and then you can launch the Gizmo. You're going to actually conduct your lab and gizmos, but you're going to put your answers right here on the right in the assignment that we have placed for you. I want you to take some time to pause and to read your learning objectives, your vocabulary words, your lesson overview, and the gizmos warm up. You can pause right now. Now, once you've read all of this information, you can go ahead and get started with your lab. This lab is going to have 12 questions. I'm going to help you with five of these questions. The rest you can do on your own while you're in class. Number one is the warm up. Right here on the right, it says on the Paramecium homostasis gizmo, turn on the show labels text box. Try to determine the function of each of the labeled structures. So right here, what you're going to do is you're going to click Show Labels. And it's going to label the organelles, all the major organelles in this unicellular organism known as a paramecium. So what you're going to do is you're just going to guess which of these organelles actually does this particular function. So which organelle contains the DNA? We know that the nucleus is the home of the DNA. But in the paramecium, it has something known as a micronucleus and a macronucleus. Which structure do you think is involved with their movement? If you saw the images that I showed you in class today, you'll know that the cilia right here on the outside helps with the movement. Which organelle pumps out water and waste? If you look at the star-like structure right here, it's called a contractile vacuole it actually is responsible for pumping out waste. And it's, this is the major organelle that helps with homeostasis in the paramecium. Last but not least, how does food enter the paramecium? Well, if you look right here, you see these food particles right here close to what's known as the cell mouth and the oral groove, oral and cell. So we can pretty much guess that this is responsible for the food. Now, once you have labeled these structures, we can go ahead and move on to number two. We're gonna observe how the paramecium and this contractile vacuole maintains a water balance. You're gonna get your gizmos ready. Select the user controlled setting here. All right, so for some reason in my gizmo, uh, it won't let me select user control, but we'll fix that later. Um, you also want to make sure that you check that the water solute concentration is 1%, and it is. Now, there are some key vocabulary terms here, so I will just want you to pause and read the introduction. Now, here's the question. How does changing solute concentrations affect a paramecium? Now, in this Gizmos lab, the solute is salt. So I like to tell students that the T in salt and the T in solute, uh, salt is just an example of a solute. And the solvent is water. So solvent actually dissolves and water dissolves. So look at the top left of the Gizmos and what is the solute concentration? And it is 1%. Number three, what is the concentration of solutes inside of the paramecium? Right here, it tells you 1.8%. Now click play and observe the size of the paramecium. And what do you notice? What happens after about 16 seconds? So we're gonna click play for our paramecium and we're gonna see what actually happens to the paramecium. I can see that the water uh, solute concentration on the outside 
is higher than what's on the inside. So normally what would happen is that water would go inside of this paramecium, right? And it would allow it to swell and swell to the point it would burst. But we can see that the contractile vacuole is doing its job. It's actually contracting all the excess water and making sure that it doesn't swell too much. All right, so now I'm gonna make my screen a little bit bigger so you can see what happens when this paramecium cannot maintain homeostasis. So we're gonna use our control and we're gonna let this play for about 16 seconds and we'll see what happens. As we can see, the contractile vacuole is getting big. Now, if we wanted to save this paramecium, we would just contract the excess water out, but we're not going to do that. We're gonna watch and see. The paramecium is in a hypotonic solution, hypo like a hippo. And we already know what happens when a cell is in a hypotonic environment. There's more water on the outside, water will go into that cell, causing it to swell and then bursting. And then all of the organelles go out of it. So let's watch it one more time and see what happens again. As you can see, the paramecium is swelling. And it bursts. So for number four, it asks you what happens to it. And we know that it swells and then ruptures. We're gonna click reset for number five and it says click reset and then set the water solute concentration to 2%. So we're gonna click reset here. We're still on user controlled. We're gonna put our water concentration all the way up to 2%. So there's more salt on the outside than there is on the inside of the particular cell. That's what we know as a hypertonic solution. So what do we do with the hyper kid? We kick them out of class. It makes the class size smaller. So let's see if that happens to our paramecium. It looks like its size shrank a little bit right there on the left. If you look away for just a split second, you won't get to see if it shrinks. And it shrinks a little bit more at the 20 second mark. And it looks like it shrinks slightly. It doesn't swell. It doesn't swell a whole lot. And it's, we know that there is a change. So it looks like it shrinks slightly. So what's going on with the paramecium is that the excess water is going out of the paramecium, causing it to shrink because it's in a hypertonic solution. So I helped you with the first five questions. The rest of this is basically easy. You just follow the directions that are in the Canvas assignment. Just follow those directions and do exactly what it says. But if you have any questions or if you get lost, come find me.